Oh my. What's up and welcome back everybody. We're here again today at my property. We have a little bit of Crockfest footage. So we're gonna do a quick animal update, show you guys some Crockfest footage. Then we'll move on to the venomous snakes. Let's get it started. All right guys, so check this out. We got a couple of chicken gizzards. Now it's very important to feed your crocodiles all kinds of stuff. Fish, frogs, chicken, chicken gizzards, organs, all kinds of stuff. This is everyone's favorite. This is my Nile crocodile and my new Nile crocodile. Now that we've had this guy for a couple of weeks, we can start to interact with him, train him, grab him with our hands, and that way we know he's not really just gonna get stressed out and die because we've had him for a little bit of time. But this guy is probably my favorite. Food, 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 food. Look at that freaking tank. Nothing sicker than a Nile crocodile. And this little guy is probably about three years old. These crocodiles are gonna grow a foot a year all the way until they're about five or six years old. Then their growth rate is gonna slow down to about two to three inches a year. Food, food, food. And when I feed all my crocodiles, I say food, 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 basically to get that food command in their head. So basically when I come in here, I say food, food, food. All the animals basically wake up and they realize it's feeding time. It's just part of training. Look. Come here, buddy. Look at that. A beast of a crocodile. East African Nile crocodile. Literally a man-eating species of crocodile. The next animal we're gonna see right here is my smooth fronted caiman. You guys know this is a new crocodilian as well. This guy is a fresh import. Let me tell you what, his colors, his markings, his scoots, his body is absolutely perfect. Now, since this guy was actually raised in the wild, his features are absolutely insane. Let's see if he wants a little bit of chicken gizzard. Food, food, food. You hear that? His jaws pop. That's super loud. Woo! Super loud jaws. Let's get one more chicken gizzard. Now these came and you really don't want to stuff them too much. So we're going to give them one more chicken gizzard. And these guys are super shy. So you're almost never going to get a caiman to eat on camera unless you've had it for a really long time. So he'll sit there with that piece of chicken gizzard. He'll hold it in his mouth like a dog. A little toy, he'll sit there with it in his mouth. And when he's ready, he'll go ahead and eat it. And then over here, we have my babies. Now I've just put my smooth fronted caiman with my alligators and these guys are doing great together. Now they have this little skinny spot to hide. They have this shallow water area. They have this hide to go underneath. So they have all kinds of little hiding places and they have a super deep, deep water feature. All right, and last but not least, my diamond caiman, which is the biggest crocodilian in my collection. We're gonna get the water to come down a little bit and then we'll leave a little bit of pile of chicken gizzards. That way when he's ready, he can go ahead and eat. We can just grab his tail for you guys. And you can see he actually has a nub tail. It's probably a good thing he has a nub tail because if not, he might be over four foot. And if he's over four foot, then he is not allowed to stay here. He would have to be moved to my separate property. But this guy is actually 36 inches, just under four foot. So it's absolutely perfect to keep here in my house. F you airplane. All right, guys, we're done feeding the crocodilians. You guys are gonna get to enjoy a little bit of crocfest footage right now. Then we'll see you in the snake room. All right, all right, duff, 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 Ooh, Blake, 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 Blake. Chandler, 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 Chandler. Hey, what do you think? What do you think about this big gator? That's the biggest gator I've ever seen. Honestly, I think that's the biggest gator I've ever seen too. Yeah. Not me, but I get it, how you guys <laughs> <laughs> Well, back in my day, we had a bunch like that. Oh, we had a ton this, uh, All right, all right, the boys have finally got a few minutes yeah. to enjoy the park. Sure. Chandler, Chandler, what species? Don't even look. Have a look at this Orinoco no, crocodile. No, 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 no. Right uh, crocodile's intermediate. Wow. Oh my wow. gosh. It's like a badass American That's dog. local, the Orinoco. Hey. Guys, I've, I've never even been here, so this is, this is crazy. <laughs> Blair, look at that broad snout. Look at that thing. It's, it's, it's hard, yeah, it's hard to find an adult broad snout. Oh, we gonna so raise good. it. We gonna raise them from the ground up. What we gonna do with them broad snouts? Tell me. We are gonna change the world. Mm -hmm. Balake, what do you think? Damn, there's a lot this of crocs here. <laughs> this is Balake's first croc fest. Yeah, first croc fest. It's a good one too. There's we're, not we're popping his black cayman cherry I mean, today. It's, we're only we're only barely sweating. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, well, it's not too hot. Good thing we got here at, at the croc fest. Usually we're cooking. There's a black cayman somewhere around here. Right now, oh, there he is. There he is. Where? He's right there. In the skin. Good lord, look at that thing. Good lord. <laughs> I hunted for six months in the swamp looking for one. Justin's got the whole black kind. That's money, dude. Oh, and they got a dwarf croc back here. So this, hey, is, is, that, is that David Weathers dwarf croc right there? D-dubs, is that yours? Is that your, Oh, no, it's a leaf. It looked like a cigarette. <laughs> That's why I flicked a dart in there. More fish, man, cigarette. Dart. <laughs> beautiful, beautiful place. There's just some fascination I have with telephone poles. 
and these people do as well. Alex Duff does nature stuff. Yeah. Stop what you're doing yeah. right now and follow yeah. him on YouTube yeah. and yeah. Instagram. Yeah. Where's the Gary? Where's the Gary? Gary right here. Oh, wow. This is what we're here for this event. This is what we're here to see. This is what we're here to study and conserve and Look at it's slender snout feeding fish. Look at that beer in the reflection. Oh, I have never oh, seen. You can't even see its snout from this angle. It's so skinny. Why does the base of his tail look like that? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. He's got shoulders. He's got a dome. How many beers? This is what we're raising money for, guys. What? Dude. <laughs> <laughs> it's over. Oh Hello. my gosh. Oh, wow. That's I have never seen teeth like this on a crocodile. Oh. They're so pretty. This is the what fourth species of crocodile that we never cover on my channel. That's the Indian gharial. Um, Crazy. <laughs> Long fish eater. Look at that. Look. What that is? Uh, I think that is a Philippine crocodile. Look at that. If you guys could only understand how big that tortoise is. Yeah. Hop over there. Just yeah, well, get on his back. <laughs> Chandler species go. I think that's where they have it. <laughs> <laughs> species go. Oh, oh, mm. Shut up. Uh, uh, red rough lemur. Whoa, black and white rough lemur. That's a ring tailed lemur. And this, look at my finger. This is my middle finger. <laughs> <laughs> Wrong. That's no, called uh, Julian. <laughs> no. Oh, wait, do oh, the snaky oh, leg. Oh, oh, oh. Duff's getting down. Duff's getting down. Duff's getting down. Duff's getting down. Y'all want me to build this? Comment down below. Comment now before I freak out. Look at that nice little water area in the sand. The gators probably love that. I just texted my ex, quit hiding from me. <laughs> I can smell the gator pheromones in the air. Yeah, it's gonna be. <laughs> <laughs> Baby spoon build. Oh, look at them. <laughs> There's definitely some huge alligators in this swamp. It's look, look, this is like the whole native village setup, and even better. Yeah, I mean, you still get your finger through, or at least we're so high up. Yeah. You guys won't rip it off like that. Yeah. Guide of food. Oh my god. No, I'm gonna get it on film. No, I'm gonna get the bellow on film. No, I'm gonna He's get it on film. Oh, whoa. That was a jaw slap. A territorial jaw slap. That's actually really rare to see. I've only seen that twice in my whole entire life. I've seen it three times. I've seen it once. Shut up, Lee. Let me tell you what, guys, there's a lot of gators here, but there's even more birds. <laughs> yeah. Dude. Shut uh, is this real? <laughs> Dude, not in the museum. Ooh, that thing's like four feet long. Bigger than me. Hey, how many people are we gonna use to wrestle a crocodile? I mean, dude, I do a trick. At least two people. on that thing. We got a vlog to do. Sorry, I'm making money. Yeah, that's actually a stuffed one. It might not actually be the real skin. I'm actually made with the tail. No way, I don't think so. This thing's huge. No way. Like for for size comparison, get on his back. Guys, look at this. This is probably the biggest animal here at St. Augustine Alligator Farm. This is a saltwater crocodile, which is the longest species of crocodile in the entire world. Look at this guy. Look at how huge he is. And they know he's actually 60 years old because he was actually born in captivity. Look at that. I mean, look at this crocodile compared to- Oh him. my, yeah, stay like that for the he's thumbnail. Huge. Look at that. How Dude. old did they say he was? 60 years old. How long though? I don't know. Long. <laughs> long. He long. He's in between 10 and 20. Guys, what do you think? How long? I think it's short. Alex? This one here? Mm, probably about four meters. Oh my God. What do you guys think? 15 feet, nine inches. <laughs> Did you know? Yes. <laughs> oh! For my video, guys, he's 15 feet, nine inches. <laughs> I'm Dave Coffin, <laughs> rattle on. All right, guys, we're here in the venomous snake room. The first snake we're gonna clean today is my pastel monocled enclosure. Now it's not dirty, but she did throw a little bit of aspen in the water. Now when the aspen gets in the water, it just visually looks bad and I wanna clean it. So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna open this up. I already took the lock off. We're gonna take her out, throw her in this bin right here. Now, for those of you guys who know, I always say this is, this is my most dangerous snake and it looks like she's going into shed so that's a, even more dangerous. The problem with snakes going into shed is they can't see. With cobras they rely on their vision and if you're a cobra handler you're also relying on the cobra's vision. When the cobra is in shed they blindly strike and when they blindly strike they strike you in your hand. So you want to be very careful. Look at that. Even in shed she's super beautiful and she is getting Thick too. Beautiful cobra. But she isn't shed, so we don't want to do anything too crazy because this snake will definitely nail you. All right, we're getting the monocled cobra back out. Ooh, feisty girl, feisty girl. Look at her flicking out her tongue, tasting us, tasting the air, seeing what we're all about. Look at that. Beautiful monocled cobra. 
Sketchy, sketchy snake. She's pretty tame right now, though, I'll tell you what. Beautiful. I gotta breed monocled cobras. I even thought about doing some hybrids and maybe breeding my monocled to my Indian. How cool would that be? A lot of people in the venomous snake hobby and the animal hobby hate hybrids, but I actually love them. Beautiful monocled cobra. This girl right here doesn't hood up much when she's out of the cage, but she has really, really good genetics. And when it comes to breeding, this female is gonna produce some crazy monocled covers in the future. All right, guys, now these are the last two cages that we have to switch over to aspen bedding before all of our cages are completely clean and on aspen. So in this cage, we have a puff adder. This is the world's fastest striking snake. Some believe it's the death adder. Some believe it's the puff adder. I personally believe it is the puff adder. So this right here, this is one of Tyler's pair. I think this is the female and he has two puff adders. These guys are a Tanzania locale, which is an extremely, extremely beautiful locale of puff adders. Now this is an Abyss family, a super heavy, thick bodied snake. So when you're handling this guy, you wanna make sure you don't drop it. If you drop this snake, you're for sure gonna break his ribs and you might even kill him. So when you're handling this snake, you wanna be extremely, extremely careful. Now I did say in my last video, if you are handling Bittis, it's good to keep them on a bottom cage. Unfortunately, we weren't thinking and we put this guy on the top cage, but soon we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna move him back to the bottom. That way we won't have to take any chances when it comes to handling this guy. Look at that beautiful puff adder. My favorite trait about these guys is they move in a straight line just like a caterpillar. You guys actually saw my Gaboon doing that in the last video. But this guy right here is absolutely beautiful. And for comparison, I'm gonna bring out the male. All right, now you wanna be extremely careful when working with puff adders. Working with one is dangerous enough and two is just, just crazy. Now this guy, he just ate. These guys ate just a couple days ago and he's got a little bit of poop in his enclosure so we're gonna pull him out as well. But wait till you guys see the colors on this snake, Ooh, even compared to that female. Look at the colors on that guy. And this snake's venom is extremely, extremely dangerous. You can see this guy right here isn't playing any games. He's coiled up in that S position, ready to strike. Now you have to take their strike range into consideration. Look at that movement. Look at how those snakes move. So freaking cool. This, this is Rusty right here. He's looking at this puff adder as if it's a little meal. Now these king cobras, they prey on other snakes. So when they see a little snake like this outside of their enclosure, he's gonna go absolutely insane. All right guys, we got this puff adder's cage all nice and clean. What we're actually gonna do, we're gonna put that male in this cage. We're gonna take this other guy, the more pretty one, and we're gonna throw her up top just because she's even more beautiful. And we want people to get a good look at the puff adders when they walk in without bending down in this cage. So we're gonna take this pretty one and throw her in that cage up top. You just wanna be super, super gentle. And that perfect balancing point on that snake, once you got her balancing. And she is a feisty puff adder, you know? All right, guys, we have one more cage to clean before this video is over, the blue insularis. In here is the biggest blue insularis in this room. Now in this room, we have seven of them. And out of all seven, this one is an absolute tank. And he's hiding back there, so we're gonna have to find him first. But this guy's gonna get a little bit of a cage rearrangement. Now a lot of people always ask, oh, what's the best venomous snake to get bit by? Which venomous snake doesn't have that bad of venom? Well, the answer is all the venoms are really, really bad. But if there is one snake that I could tell you guys where the venom isn't as bad as the others, it's the blue insularis. Now I actually know a lot of guys who have taken bites from blue insularises and it hasn't been that much of a big deal. But then again, I've also heard reports of guys getting bit by a blue insularis and spending four days in the ICU. So it just depends on how much venom they pump into you, how big the snake is, and really what locality of venom hits you. This guy right here, I wouldn't want to take a bite by just because he's so big. Now I think the majority of bites that occur are with really, really small blue insularises, and that's why those bites aren't fatal or very bad. But this guy right here is an absolute tank, a beast of a specimen. Off to the right, we have that pearl morph Chinese cobra putting up. Those snakes are honestly some of my favorite cobras. A super deadly cobra, 
but some of my favorites. Ooh -wee. She just went to strike. Look at the blue on this snake. Now I believe this is a wild caught snake. This is Tyler, so I really don't know much about this guy, but he's got a couple little bumps on him, so he could be a wild caught specimen, but look at the blues on him. Look at that, such a beautiful Insularis. And this guy's a great eater. A lot of people have problems with Insularis, but this guy right here is absolutely a fantastic eater. And if you zoom into his tail, most of the times their tails have that really bright maroon reddish color, which is a super cool feature on these blue Insularises. Look at that. Such a crazy snake. It blows my mind every time I pull these snakes out, you see them and just how baby blue they are. It's insane. There's no other snake in the world that's baby blue like this. All right, guys, we got this blue Insularis cage all nice and spanky clean. Clean water, clean hides, clean logs, and he's ready to go. Now we got her a lot of logs, a lot of stuff to climb and hang on. Now for those of you who don't know, this species is extremely, extremely arboreal. So if you look for them in the wild, you're only really gonna find them up high in the trees, up top in bushes and things like that. You're never really gonna find this snake laying low to the floor. Even in her cage, she rarely ever sits on the floor. She's always sitting up on her logs. Look at the blues. The definition of baby blue. All right, in the cage you go. Such a beautiful snake. All right, guys, that is the end of today's episode. If you enjoyed watching us at CropFest, if you enjoyed watching me handling these snakes, don't forget like, comment, and the most important part, subscribe to the YouTube channel. We'll see you next time.